Welcome, Bruce and Ed, live from New York, the Big Apple. That's right. I'm Ed. And I'm Bruce. And it's Great Memorial. to see you here. Memorial weekend coming up. Yep. It's a beautiful day in New York. Oh my gosh, it went straight from winter to summer. It's 91 degrees. <laughs> just today. I just got back from Florida, and it's beautiful down there, too. Balmy and breezy in the evenings. I had a great time. As I'm, you can see, I'm still... Haven't shaved. <laughs> it's uh, I'm I'm glad to be indoors with the air conditioning actually, but it'd be a great day to go out and uh, play. This is going to be a great weekend, I think. I, although I haven't seen the weather, I'm sure it's going to be nice. So I'm still trying to catch up. <laughs> Been gone for too long. So uh, first, today's show is sponsored by Columbus Dance Center in Columbus, Ohio. If you're anywhere near Central Ohio in the Midwest. Columbus Dance Center in Columbus, Ohio offers superior private and group instruction in ballroom, Latin American, wedding, dance sport, hip hop, and many more. No experience or partner necessary. Check out ColumbusDanceCenter.com. That's ColumbusDanceCenter.com. And uh, Mezzi Grill is our, our second sponsor. Quick, healthy food in NYC. Eastern Mediterranean food made made any way you like it with the best all natural ingredients priced reasonably and served in a warm friendly casual environment 55th street and 8th avenue in new york city mezzegrill.com m-e-z-e grill.com so yeah we want to thank our sponsors we really appreciate their support and uh, bringing us to you thank you what's up what uh what do you have to talk about today well um among a lot of things, I guess. I guess everyone's talking about... I've been kind of out of touch just because I've been away and spending time with family and friends. So uh, I, uh, what's going on with this Facebook thing? They keep There's all these announcements every day and you're boycotting it and why? Well, and <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, have, they're big in the news with their privacy issues because... Uh, as I think you know, it's interesting because I follow all the the techie blogs and techie you know netcasts and stuff. And people who are very technical, they really understand what's going on, and they're outraged. They're really furious, actually, about what uh, Facebook has done. Their privacy seems to be like every time they make a change, things get worse. And instead of um, making things more obvious and more secure. They're making them, they seem to be making them um, more open. Like, for example, they, there's a graph on one of the, I think it's the Electronic Freedom Foundation's website that shows this chart of over the years how Facebook's privacy um, defaults, I guess, have er- eroded to what and initially they promised their users that all this stuff is only viewable by you and your friends, which is, of course, what you wanted. That's the idea. Mm-hmm. But then over time, they keep changing things. And when they change it, they make it more open, and you have to opt out, which, of course, most people never do. They just right. never, most people That's just like me. I don't really go into the settings hardly ever, maybe five times in the five years that I've been using it. Yeah, normal average users don't even bother to look at that. They just assume that, well, you know, they know what they're doing and the defaults are probably fine, which you you probably would assume. I mean, why wouldn't you? You know, they he didn't have any reason to not trust them until now when it's really being exposed, it's coming out in the news that their their privacy just keeps eroding and eroding and eroding. So what used to be completely private is now completely open to the point where there actually is effectively no privacy at all. Because, see, I don't know, most people in IT understand these things, but most of the public, the vast majority of people, have no clue what I'm talking about. And you probably don't either. You mm, know, man, I could read, <laughs> you know, the, you can, and check mark things, well, I think, so I can sort of understand them. But Not me, not me, because I have looked... It seems to change so much. Lately. I have looked at those privacy settings, and there's something like 270 or 170 different possible settings. It's absolutely insane. If you actually go in and try to understand it, and you're a, a professional computer person, 
you will not be able, at least I am not able to understand it. And most of the technical people I know are not able to understand the complicated settings. And I can only assume that they were designed that way carefully. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you can make something simple like Twitter, public or private, A or B. It's right. as simple as that. You know, that's how simple it should be, but it's not. They, right. they, it's they. You know, okay, well... I know they just updated like an hour ago or they came out saying that everything is simpler and I don't know, I haven't looked into it yet. There was a there was a press uh, conference today where they announced their new improved uh, privacy settings or something, but... Uh, and they said that they launched them today. Well, I was in looking at them and I really can't tell any difference. And also Mark Zuckerberg, the CEO, says uh, in, you know, in the New York Times, I was just reading about that, um, that this is going to be the final revision to their privacy settings for, for some time, you know. Um, but what's but their, what was their original agenda? I mean, they just want it to be out there public so they can create ad-based revenue, I guess. Yeah, why do they want it public? Well, that's a very good question. The reason they want it public is um, not so much to, you know, spread your dirty laundry to all your friends and coworkers and uh, job interviewers and everything, uh, colleges you might want to apply for. But no, the, the reason that they care about it, that, uh, making your private stuff public is uh, to sell this information to third parties. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, mar not only marketers can not only know that you clicked on an ad, but then they can go and get all your private information, your address, where you live, your zip code, your email addresses and phone numbers and all your friends and all sorts of things. I mean, just it's all, the possibilities are unlimited because there's so much information in there. And see, it, you're lulled into putting it in there because it's oh, it's just for your friends. It's for your family. Don't you want to show that, share this with your friends and family? Right. But and it's so pervasive, it seems, because like, I was doing something on my iPhone recently, and um, it wasn't something that I wanted to publish, but one of the options, I was trying to, I forget what I was trying to do, but one of the options, I think maybe I was trying to forward an email or something, and but one of the options on the menu, and if I didn't put my finger right where I wanted it, it would have gone to Facebook, which would have, you know, it would have not been good. Oh, <laughs> so, man. <laughs> it seems so pervasive, and it's like, I don't want that there. You know, it should be just, you know, forward or reply or whatever. Or I forget Remind, exactly. That reminds me of the old horror stories, you know, when you accidentally send uh, <laughs> some nasty email and, it, oops, you send it to the whole company or something. <laughs> yeah. But this is just as, this is even, it could be worse. I mean, you put, post it on Facebook and, you know, yeah, everybody. It was like Twitter and Facebook. And then the other, the main thing that I wanted to do was like in between that or something. So it's like. And we go to everybody who's ever known anybody who's ever known anybody you've ever known. I mean, right. it's just insane. It's, it's yeah, it's just, it can spread like uh, viral instantly, though, super, super fast. And there's no way to get it back. Once you put it on there, you've given it to them. You, you've given up all rights to it. Yeah. You know, it's absolutely, absolutely theirs. So they make money. The bottom line is they make money by giving this marketing information to other companies or selling it to them. Right. Now, there's some things that most people don't understand. Um, you know, you can go in and you can fine tune your stuff. You can make everything private, 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 private. Only my friends. You can set mm -hmm. every single setting to only my friends. And the truth is every single thing you put in there is public. You know why? <laughs> They have another scheme of of, um, of settings, and when I first read them, I didn't know what the heck that was about until I started reading some of these articles in the news. You, you just Google it, and then you do Google News, and you'll you know New York Times and many many uh, publications have written stories about this exposés. But what it is, your there's settings for your friends can share information about you. Okay, so mm. <laughs> automatically without your knowledge. Your friends don't even know it because by default, all of your friends are set to share all of your information oh. with everyone else. So no matter, including companies, so third parties. So if you parties, only let your friends look, you better not have by any default, friends. Then yeah. they're letting everyone yeah. else yeah. see everything. So apparently, the on. only way, I mean, you know, hopefully so, they change that. I uh, don't think so. No, if if you uh, no, the defaults are still the defaults. 
as far as I know, the it has that has not changed. Um, there, he, you know, Mark Zuckerberg announced today that you know this new simpler way to change the settings. But apparently, the New York Times, if I'm if I'm reading this right, they said that he didn't change the defaults. So, and and I looked at it. I don't see anything simpler. What? Well, we'll have to look there's, at it more. And there's only eight major categories with you know 127 levels deep instead of 270. Yeah. You know, it's no. I, I did look at it. It's crazy, crazy, well, crazy complex. And there, the defaults have not changed. So anyway, here's the here's the thing that people don't understand. So if you have even one friend on Facebook that has the default settings set, which of course they do then all the information your friend can see, so can marketers, third-party companies, other applications, other websites, and so on. Mm-hmm. There's uh, there's actually um, a website. If you just Google, it's called uh, not Facebook, but Open Book. Um, let me find it here real quick. Th- this is just shocking, actually. Here it is. It's called, it's called, the website is actually called youropenbook.org, okay? Go to youropenbook.org. Looks like and, um, <clears throat> yeah, <it's>, Facebook. <laughs> well, yeah, it's designed to look like the Facebook font. But at the top, the quote is an actual quote from Mark Zuckerberg, the founder and CEO of Facebook. His famous quote where he said, they trust me, dumb Fs. Okay, you can fill in the blank. Um I'm going to make, keep it a family-friendly show. But this is an actual quote from Mark Zuckerberg in the early days of when he was forming uh, Facebook. And someone asked him, how do you have all this private information about all these people? He said, they just trust me, those dumb Fs. So, <laughs> you know, that's uh, very, very telling. So, anyway, you go to Open Book, uh, sorry, it's youropenbook.org, and they have these suggested phrases that you can search for. You can put in... Uh, like, quote, my HIV test, quote. And you're going to find thousands of people who just reported and they just posted, uh, wow, I'm negative, or I just got my HIV test and I'm positive, and so on and so on and so on. Millions of people, millions of people. And they have no idea that I'm not logged into Facebook. So they're getting this, this, is, public. this is public. Absolutely public. I'm not logged into Facebook. Oh. I could be anywhere in a public library without logging in. That's why they call it Open Book. <laughs> there, this is, the point of this website, youropenbook.org, is to, to teach the public how screwed up Facebook is. It's really, really like a billboard on I-95. If you post anything on there... You just posted it on a billboard on I-95 or a newspaper, you know, a full-page mm-hmm. ad in the New York Times. Right. There's, there's their private pictures, their their whole profile, there's their exact context and when and the date and time they posted it. It's crazy. See, people just hear the headlines and they don't understand the how, – how is this working? How it's working is you can set everything to completely private and if you have so much as one friend – it's not private. Right. It's public. So it's it's a big lie is what it is. So, it's, a, yeah. it's a big, big lie. It's the big lie. They just Absolutely. trick you. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, and there's another one. Um, there's another major website called um, something like Quit. Let me see. I'm going to Google it real quick. Quit Facebook, I think it is. Um, there's tons of how to quit Facebook items, but... Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I've been using it less lately, just for no apparent reason, but um, I do like it just because I, I like to be in touch. And obviously, that's why everyone's in there. Oh, there's another thing. Um, you, you can't just delete your Facebook account. First of all, by the terms of service, they own everything that you've put on there. So anything that you put on there, they own. Uh-huh. Okay. Now, secondly, there's, a, there's two things. There's, they, just to confuse you more, okay, to de- you can deactivate your Facebook account, but that doesn't delete it. You have to actually deactivate it, and then you have to actually delete it. But to delete it, it doesn't actually delete. <laughs> it it takes like two weeks or something like that, and then they supposedly delete it, but they don't. They ha- have been on record. They they will not assure anyone that they mm-hmm. actually delete the information because mm-hmm. they own the information. Right. According to the terms of service, they own all of your data. They own all of your privacy, basically. They own it, and you know, you deactivate it, it does nothing, really. It just takes it offline. And then, But if you delete it, it doesn't delete for two weeks. And even after that, um, many people have reported that they can still search and they can still find stuff from their Facebook account 
long after they've deleted it. Yeah. And and even if me. even if you can't, they 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 own it, and they do they will not assure anyone that they actually are deleting it. Mm-hmm. So it's it's very dangerous. There's a there's also a website. Um, can't find it right now. There's something uh, something like um, here it is. It's called quitfacebook.com. No. Quit, quit Facebook, Facebook Day. Day. Quit Facebook com. Day dot com. And these these are people who are um, signing up. They're committing to quit Facebook because <laughs> it, it, it's like crack. You know, there's 400 million users. It, it's like I don't know what it's like. Like canceling your phone service in the old days when you, when everybody had a phone. You know, it's it's a big deal for a lot of people. They're really hooked on it. That's that's their way of communicating. Um, yeah, so why would you quit it? Well, this is why, because Facebook, you know, many people are, are saying Facebook is evil. Facebook is lying. They're absolutely deceiving their right. users, and it's just not right. They, they can't be allowed to get away with this. But, um, you know, so, okay, I'm looking at this right now. There's 22,000, roughly 22,500 people who have committed to quitting Facebook. All right. right. It's called quitfacebookday.com. Now, what is that? That's nothing. It's a drop in the bucket to 400 million users. Right. But I think that you know the point is really not that you know they're gonna. This is gonna be a big you know loss of their subscribers or whatever. But I think the point is the publicity, the bad press, the bad and and the bigger point. What what's gonna fix this is two things, in my opinion. One is um, Congress. The government uh, regulators are really looking into this. Uh, I was just reading that um, they they did this press announcement today about their new simplified settings, whatever. But they didn't change any defaults. They didn't really change anything. And mm-hmm. it, to me, to my eye, it's not any simpler than it was before. It's just a bunch of press hot air, in my opinion. So they but really haven't I don't done any damage control except what the press or this press release. Yeah, I don't. I mean, it was an it was an actual press conference, but I don't think that they they changed anything really. Mm-hmm. But they, I also read that they're going to actually do something in Washington D.C. coming up Thursday, I think, where um, you know, whatever, within earshot of Congress, uh, supposedly, because there are a lot of politicians, governors, and things like that that are that are really being loud about uh, their concern about this. And all it's going to take is a few attorneys generals or or. Congress to you know say we're going to supervise this we're going to regulate you oh, great. yeah and th- and that's the last thing Facebook needs is the government to put their nose in on it because so they're going to want it all that information also you know, people, <laughs> that's the whole reason they like to get in there yeah I mean you, if you Google you know how Facebook was formed you're going to read all kinds of expose articles about this Mark Zuckerberg character and yeah I've read lack of characters uh, you know alleged lack of character and so on but. What I say is that if this guy, Mark Zuckerberg, has half a brain, he had better shape up fast. And he better realize that the only way Facebook is really going to survive um, the federal government <laughs> scrutinizing and regulating them is if they shape up and fast and they default everything to totally private. Right. So their biggest threat is going to be government regulation, I think. And then the other thing is... Um, another thing that's going to uh, change this whole system is um, the idea of an alternative. Because people say, well, what's the alternative? I mean, meanwhile, there's there's millions of different um, uh, social networks, but are they really any better? You know, the whole entire nation of Brazil is on one social network called Orkut, which is owned right. by Google, but nobody right. here has ever heard of it. It's, it's weird how these things kind of become regional. But they do. They spread like, you know, they spread like the multi-level marketing systems. You know how you sell Amway, Shackley, whatever nonsense multi-level marketing thing? You, um, you end up selling to all your friends and family. And it's just like a social network, right? Yeah, it's The it so- social marketing network. Right. Well, they spread like that. So one will be really, really popular in Japan and Philippines and Brazil, but nobody's ever heard of it in London or New York, you know? Right. So it, that's how these kind of work. But anyway, there's tons and tons of social networks. But do we really trust Google that much more than Facebook? I mean, what you know, the thing is... What we need and what smart people realize is that what we really need is a free open source alternative that's distributed and private from the ground up. So the, I don't know if you if you saw this in the news, but there's this group, um, what is it called? This, uh, I'm going to have to Google it now, but, um, oh, Dispario, no, what is it? <laughs> um, there's a group of students 
at, um, hang on, let me just Google it real quick, at NYU, okay, there's this website that people can uh, propose their startups or their ventures and stuff and raise capital. Mm-hmm. Um, I should have had this up here. I'll find it. I'll find it when you were during the break. But anyway, um, they propose. There's like I think there's six kids at NYU. They're total geeks and they're they're brilliant. You know, little NYU student geeks, and they live for their computer lab. And they proposed in this video on this website. I think it's called Kickstart. That's what it is. I just just hit me. Um, they proposed on this thing, uh, this website called Kickstart. Let me do. Let me Google Kickstart Facebook. Um, do, 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 do. Alternative. Alternative. I'll find it. Anyway. Um, they proposed a plan to develop, to start a venture that would develop a private, you know, what do you call it? It's like distributed. Distributed means that, it, that all the data is not in one central repository. Because mm -hmm. like the kids, the way they described it actually very well, they said, I, we are friends. We don't need to pass a note to a central repository called Facebook so that Facebook can send the note to my friend. No, mm -hmm. I, we can talk to our friends directly. Mm -hmm. We don't need that. So they're talking about, but social networks are really cool. Yeah. You know, the flip side of all this is that Facebook is a wonderful, wonderful tool. I've been, I've personally had experience last week. I got connected to a relative I didn't even know existed, a cousin that's, you know, almost my age that, you know, through weirdness in the family when you know siblings you know don't speak for years and things a lot of people have that kind of you know heavy baggage whatever in their family's past lots of more people than you even uh, realize anyway I didn't even know that my dad had a sister for sure and she her mother um, never told her she didn't know until my dad's funeral that her mother had two brothers so it's really bizarre but we're mm -hmm. cousins and we're almost the same age and it's just really weird but we got connected through Facebook yeah that's the same thing happened to me and another friend that I hadn't actually hadn't had any contact with and wondered was he living or dead or what the heck for 25 years you know that a couple of months ago Mm -hmm. um, I got connected with, and it's just, it's it's really a miracle. I mean, it's, it's well, like... Well, everyone has a story like that. That's mm -hmm. why they're on there. Yeah, I mean, it's almost like Facebook is, uh, a f it's almost like a free um, people Atlas. search, mm -hmm. like like a like a private investigator that would do a people search, you know, those, those services that do that. It's almost like everybody has a free people search thing to, to find people, long lost friends and family. So it's very, very useful. Like, it can be very, very practical. You can also waste your whole life playing in there. And also, somebody, um, actually I was chatting, you know, who is uh, with Leo Laporte's sister, Eva Laporte. She's be we become little chat buddies. And um, she was telling me that, the w I love the way she described it. She said that it could be a little bit, um, when you reconnect with old, old friends and acquaintances from years and years ago, mm -hmm. and at first it's exciting, like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, how are you, what's new, babies, kids, pictures, blah, blah, blah. But then after that, you know, they're checking in every day and so on. And you're, the people, there's a lot of people who they're just not really that interested in staying connected. Oh, it's really fun to well, be they connected. Well, like to know that they can go somewhere to be connected. Yeah. But... I'm just, and a lot of people read, but they don't write anything. Right. But a lot of people just don't really want to be connected with those people anymore. There's a lot of that, too. Just as much as there is friends who do want to stay connected, there's just as many that don't really. You know, like, I didn't really like you when you were my coworker then. But now, you know, I, I'm really not that interested in your life. And so th this is kind of her perspective is that th there's a lot of that where people just don't really care enough to be connected. Like, if I wanted to be connected, I would have stayed connected. You know what I'm saying? So there's, like, this gray feeling of weirdness that, you know, you don't really want to stay connected to me in the first place, but I guess I have to friend you because I did know you at one point. It's this mm -hmm. weird mm -hmm. kind of weirdness. Anyway, yeah. let's take a break real quick because we want to thank our uh, sponsors today. Um, the uh, Today's show is brought to you by, and we want to thank for most gracious sponsors, Columbus Dance Center in Columbus, Ohio. If you're anywhere near the Midwest, Central Ohio, this is one of the best dance studios in the, in the country. They offer superior private and group instruction in ballroom, Latin American, wedding, dance sport, hip hop, and many more. ColumbusDanceCenter.com, ColumbusDanceCentre.com, and also Mezzi Grill. 
For it's Eastern Mediterranean food, mezzegrill.com. M-A-Z-E, grill.com. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. So, anyway, that's kind of... Um, we'll have to keep an eye on that Facebook. Obviously, you have a lot to say about it. Uh, but I'll check into it, too, now that I'm back at home base. And, uh, you know, keep you guys up to date on what to do or what not to do and how to do it things like that. Oh, I wanted to say this too about um, Facebook. If you, you know, most people are not up to deleting their Facebook account. Well, the people who are up to deleting their Facebook account are the people who never used it anyway. Like there's people that created an account and I'm on there and after reading all this nonsense, I just deleted my account. So a lot of the people who say I deleted my Facebook account you know, even reporters and stuff, the, the, when you hear the rest of the story, the truth comes out, they never actually used it anyway, okay? Like me, I actually decided I'm not going to delete it. I'm not going to delete my Facebook account because I don't use it that way. I friend everybody. You want to be my friend? Click friend. I accept you. I accept everybody. I use Facebook like it's Twitter. I may, Everything on Facebook is public. I never put anything on Facebook that I wouldn't broadcast, put in a newspaper or on a billboard, just like Twitter. And my friends on Facebook are the general public, absolutely everyone. So if you use it like that, you're fine, but most people don't. I know most people actually friend only their real friends. They think that's safer, and it's, it's ironically the opposite. But anyway, if you well, use... Well, or else then <coughs> you end up with a lot of junk. It's just broadcasting, on, exactly. That's why I don't read it. people marketing yeah. their wares. And I don't read Facebook. I only read the replies to what I say, and that's just like feedback, you know, letters, you know, viewers let mail and stuff like that. But um, anyway, what I was going to say is if you use Facebook the way normal people use Facebook and you don't want to delete your account, I want to recommend one thing. If you don't do anything else but this, do this, all right? When you log into Facebook, do not check mark, keep me signed in. Don't check mark that. And when you're done with your Facebook, log out. Make sure you log out. And I'll tell you why. Because Facebook now, Facebook, Facebook now has this um, feature. Um, I forgot what they call it, but uh, oh, customized, uh, customized experience or something like that with their partner sites, which means any old website in the world that that wants to hook up a deal, a backdoor deal with them. So you go and visit some completely different website, and bingo, oh, that was posted to Facebook. Everybody in the world, private, third-party enterprises, people you don't even know, friends and friends of friends and non-friends of non-friends of friends, all saw that you went to that website. Oh, Ed likes Yelp.com. Oh, and not only that, if you go there, it actually puts it in your likes. It's in your profile as one of the websites you like. <laughs> and you don't do anything. It's absolutely like Even Big Brother. Even though you Brother, went there to complain. <laughs> like the giant eyeball of Big Brother. Yeah, you could be going there because you want to complain about the place. But you, the giant <laughs> eyeball of Big Brother is watching over your shoulder, watching what websites you browse to. And not only that, they're broadcasting it to all sorts of disinterested third parties that, well, are very interested third parties that are watching you. Like the government? <laughs> Anybody. Yeah, businesses, marketing, spam. I mean... Just who knows? Your employer. It's just way, way too much information. Do you really want somebody following you around on, and, and recording every website you visit? I don't think so. I mean, that's that's just absolutely wrong. I think that Facebook is going to be a really good test case. I think Google is watching very closely what's happening to Facebook because Google had better not make the same mistakes Facebook is because Google has even more information about you than Facebook does. So um, anyway... That's going to mm-hmm. be really fascinating to see how the, this whole thing unfolds. Yeah, we'll keep you abreast. Um, so, moving on to some other topics. Yeah, tell us your about topic. Your, you've I, that's the one I brought up. How about you? This, well, um, let's see. Did you want to talk about this? Yeah, after you talk about something. That's right. Okay. All right. Let's see. Well, let's see. The pre- Facebook press announcement. Well, that's it. I just. Um, my blog items. I was going to go read through my blog items. This is, um, oh yeah, this is a, my blog items are a little bit, you know, involve stories. That's why, you know, I use Twitter and I also have a blog. If it fits in a 140 character little text message tweet, then it goes on Twitter. But if it's, if it's a little bit more involved, then I write a little blog story. But, um, <coughs> pardon me, this one is uh, a blog item I titled, and on the seventh day, God made Ubuntu and all was well. Two awesome companies changed the entire world this week. Now, um, 
a lot of people that follow my Twitter and so on, they know about these things. But for those of you who don't, let me explain it really simply. There's a thing called FOSS, F-O-S-S, stands for Free Open Source Software. And the best way I can describe it is it's a movement. It's not, it's not a religion or anything like that. It's not a cult. But it's, it's not like normal corporate profit motive commerce. It's a movement. It's almost like um, the green movement to preserve and protect, you know, the air and the earth and the, you know, the, the planet. It's it's like that. It's a movement um, for good, mm-hmm. for the good of all mankind. Um, and okay, most people who've never heard of it are just like, what? <laughs> but what it is is it's a movement where made up of millions and millions and millions of programmers, software developers all over the world who work through the internet, they collaborate, and they work on developing software. All volunteer, right. and it's their gift to humanity. Okay, So the resulting software is viewed by millions of other eyes, and it's open source. So in other words, the recipe is published. So anything that you change, the requirement is you can take it and you can use it, but anything, any improvements or changes you make, you have to publish back into this master recipe book, we'll call it, recipe book of, of uh, programs and stuff. So that makes sense. So the idea is that uh, millions of people collaborating on one thing will pr- result in a superior product. Of course it does. Microsoft, no matter how big and rich they are, or Google, whoever, m- Microsoft, I mean, they can only afford so many programmers. If they have four you know, or if they have 400 working on a product, it's still a finite number of programmers and developers who are looking at the thing. Right. Um, but when you have millions and millions of people in Pakistan, in the Philippines, in Germany, in Australia, in England, in you know California, and all over in South America, and you know, whatever Portugal, there there are people all over the world that are little geek brainiacs that are looking at these and going, well, why don't you do this? And they're doing it from different angles, like the user's right. perspective, like, why don't you make the buttons bigger? And th- this this is not clear, the way it's described, from the user interface and also from the back end, like, this process is too slow. This is too bulky. Why don't you use this super sophisticated new algorithm and make it lightning fast and, you know, more resource, you know, whatever blah, 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 geek talk, to make it better, 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 better. Okay, imagine if the auto industry did that. If they never started over with a new model, they just kept improving the same old model for 50 years. We'd have an amazing, amazing car. <laughs> the uh, The problem is they don't. They throw the whole thing out, and they have to redesign it from scratch so that it looks new, so you'll buy a new car. And the same thing happens with software. Software from Microsoft and all these other companies, they have to throw out the old Windows and start all over and call it Windows something new so that you'll have to go buy it and of course it always takes more hard drive space more memory more power more speed so that you'll have to buy a new computer (laughs) so they're completely in bed with the uh, computer manufacturers the computer manufacturers love it because it forces you to buy a new computer well um, the operating system that is uh, number one in the the world of FOSS free open source software is called Linux most people have heard of it. They might have heard of it, but they don't really know that much about it. Um, nobody is, because it's free in every sense of the word, free as in freedom and free as in no money, The uh, mo- they don't have $100 million in TV commercials on TV every year. You know about Apple. You know about Microsoft, you know, because they're spending hundreds of millions of dollars on TV commercials. But nobody's, it, it's free. So who's going to spend the money on marketing it? They're, they aren't. However, it's the operating system, the computer operating system that you use most. Um, some unbelievable percentage, you know, like somewhere between 60 and 90% of all websites on the internet, the computer on the other side of that website, the back end of it, is running Linux. You're mm-hmm. looking at a website, well that's a computer, obviously, on the other side, and that's Linux. Mm-hmm. Also, Google is Linux. I mean, mm-hmm. Google Search, Google Gmail, Google Docs, Google Calendar, Google everything Google is almost entirely Linux. Even the company itself uses Linux throughout the company. They just don't ever say that. <laughs> they don't talk about it that much. You know, people they know not people that don't I guess. People don't know about it and there's no money to be made. If there's no money to be made, who's talking about it? It's like it's like spreading by word of mouth. Okay. So 
um, it's not really a charity, but it's a good cause, and it spreads by word of mouth, and it is far superior. That's the other thing. Um, Linux is far superior than Windows or Mac. There's no such thing as a virus. It really literally can run it may be able to run forever without rebooting because there's a uh, an actual installation of like Linux version 0.02 or something like that that's been running continuously for 15 years. It has like backup power supply, backup everything, but the the system has not been rebooted in like 15 years or some wow. crazy crazy long time. Is you know I I had I was talking to the editor in chief of Linux Gazette and and uh, saying that you know I know that you can run a, a computer running Linux for a year without rebooting it and he said oh no that's not true I'm like what do you mean it's not true he says you can run it forever you know this this one that's still running since the beginning that's never been rebooted so what's the point of the anyway, story anyway. So that's what FOSS is, and so these, basically Linux has been developed for 50 years now, and the um, it keeps improving and keeps improving, and not just Linux, but all the applications that run on top of it. So you've got applications for, um, you know, Word, like like uh, Microsoft's equivalent of Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Access, you know, you got Photoshop, video editors, audio editors, absolutely, you know, Quick and QuickBooks equivalents that are free open source that are equal or better in uh, every category. Many, many more applications than you can imagine. All right, now, the that's what FOSS is. And you have to have the background knowledge to understand um, <laughs> a little bit about this. Ten minutes of knowledge. Mm -hmm. So, but anyway, a lifetime of benefit. So, here's the deal. Two companies, two awesome, amazing companies did something this last week that is going to change the world. Mark my words. You might think this is boring, but I'm telling you, this is going to change the world. All right. There's um, there's such a thing as Codex, which means it's like a like a deprogramming or de-encrypting language. It's, it compresses a video or audio uh, into a smaller format so that you can stream it out through the Internet fast enough Um that you can actually watch it in real time, right? Mm -hmm. So when you're watching a video on YouTube, you're watching a video that is compressed into this little tiny format called Flash and then uncompressed on your computer in real time so that you can actually watch the video and listen to the music. So that's how that works. Now, most those are all, um, almost all of them are proprietary. They're owned by somebody. There's a patent um, that someone owns. So it doesn't matter if you're listening to an MP3 file. MP3 is a patented technology. Right. Um, Flash is proprietary, and um, almost all of them are proprietary. Okay. The the thing about proprietary mean the pr the issue with it is that somebody has to pay somebody money to use it. So when you buy an MP3 player, you buy an iPod or whatever, that company that made that device had to pay a fee. For right. every iPod they sold, they had to pay a fee to the guy who owns the patent for MP3 technology. Right. Okay. Well, all right. So this week, um, first of all, Google decided that there really needed to be a free open source codec for video and audio on the Internet. Um, there's already a superior audio codec called Vorbis, mm -hmm. but it just wasn't isn't widely used. I mean, it's it's actually far better than MP3. It's the the audio quality is far better, and the size and the compression is far better, and all this. Far it's superior. Not mainstream. It's just that nobody uses it. It's just not caught on because there's nobody marketing it and pushing it and all that. Nobody behind it. Nobody backing it enough. The, uh, now the video codec is um, has been flash, and then for the iPhone they had to use this thing called H.264. So when you watch a YouTube video on an iPhone, you're actually watching it in an H.264 format. Well, that's proprietary too. Somebody's got to get paid to use that thing. Well, there there was an open source video one that wasn't as good. It's not as good though. Well, there is another one that I didn't know about, but it's called VP8. That was a proprietary video codec. Like H.264, mm -hmm. it's like equal, maybe better than H.264. Depends on who you ask in there. But Google, in their wisdom, they did a wonderful, wonderful thing. They bought the company <laughs> that owns that codec, and they therefore they own the codec. And then they, they bought it, and they took it, and they made it open source, which means they gave it to you as a gift. They gave it to the whole world as a free open source codec. Yeah, but so, wasn't it open source to begin with? No. Oh. It was proprietary. Oh, see, I see. That, that's why they had to buy the company that owned it, that created it. Mm -hmm. They bought the company that created it. And they didn't create it from a free open source? No. Like, 
Nope, nope. Paranormal it was completely proprietary. It was a company here in New York. I think it was in here in New York. Uh-huh. They created the thing. They owned it. They sold it. They licensed it, and so on. And that's how they made a living. That's how they made their money. Well, Google bought it. They bought the entire company. Mm-hmm. So they own the company. They own the product. They own the license. They took the license and gave it away to the whole planet. So people can add on to that. They can just they can Take use that it and then build. They on can that. use it and they can improve it and so on. Yeah, they're not going to be changing it a lot though because you know you change it and it changes thing the way things work. So what they're going to do is they're, they're open sourcing it and then they're, they're there's going to be some amount of improvement that can be done, but then they're going to kind of lock it in because. All right, because with the way that works is you, you can't change it too much because then everything will be lose its compatibility. All right, so that's the first thing. The second thing is they're in the process, talk about their commitment, they own a website you might have heard of. In fact, it's the number one website on the Internet, I think, YouTube. Right. Google owns YouTube, so now they're in the process of converting every single video on YouTube into this new format. It's called WebM, by the way. The new format is called WebM. It's free open source, and it is the video and audio uh, thing combined. So I guess that that uh, will eliminate them paying for like a player or something for MP3, the proprietary stuff. Yeah, well... Eventually. Um, yeah, I'm sure they had to pay... They probably had to pay Adobe for Flash, but it's mainly not just for them. It's for you and me and everybody that we can all use these types of players and create your own players, and nobody has to get paid. So you can actually have it on everything. For example, you know, iPad, you know, Steve Jobs doesn't like uh, Adobe, so he refuses to support Flash. Meanwhile, everything's in Flash. And, you you know, Flash isn't on the Android phones and because, you know, whatever, whatever. There's all these this politics and stuff. But when, every, when it's free open source, there's no reason for everything not to support it. Right. It's just the way it should be. So it's like a universal... Or should have been from yeah, the beginning. <laughs> it's like a universal jack for or plugging else. an electrical thing into the wall or to plugging a phone line into the wall. You know, it's like universal. Everybody should work, you know, speak the same freaking language. Well, now they do. So the point is, on your on your phones, on your smartphones, um, and, and your audio devices, they will not be MP3 players anymore. They'll probably still play that maybe, but they'll... Vorbis is the audio codec, and VP8 is the video, and together, audio and video, they call it WebM. So anyway... Um, the idea behind oh and then all the new devices like the new smartphones will have an actual processor chip in it that will decode that WebM format super fast so Mm -hmm. that it'll actually be able to keep up and play video on your phone even though um, it takes a lot of processing power to do that Mm -hmm. so anyway that's one thing and the other thing is uh, that happened this week is another company that actually owns what may be the world's best video editing software oh okay it's one that um, you know even if you're in video editing you might not have heard of it it's called Lightworks and uh, by a company called Edit Share and they um, it's actually there's like hundreds of major Hollywood films you would recognize all the names of them that have been made using this video editor software. it's a right. high end video editing software now, um, it didn't win. I mean, it's not famous like um, Avid is famous in that Final high end Cup, video editing. Final Cut Pro. Final Cut Pro and Apple. Avid, right. Uh, so, a lot of people bought Apple computers specifically to run Final Cut Pro. Yeah, I know a lot of people just use that, right? Mm-hmm. And, uh, and Avid is the other one that's, you know, that they're, they're Microsoft. Very, very. No, it's not Microsoft, but it's it runs on Windows. Well, it runs on Windows, I yeah. mean. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, so anyway, those are the two famous ones. But this one is actually many, many really professional video editors and their Academy Award, Oscar Academy Award winning and Emmy Award winning video editors um, swear that this Lightworks is better than those. Well, that would be good for us. Well, <laughs> well, wait, I didn't tell you the punchline. The company that owns it you know they weren't making enough money because they're you know they're selling how many how many Hollywood producers are buying it you know I mean if they sold a dozen copies it's not enough so I'm assuming the reason is that they didn't they weren't making enough money so what they did is they took this superior product and they decided they're gonna make it free open source once again they so it's just like buy like Google did they buying it and 
uh, giving, it, giving it away to the entire world. Exactly. All humanity. To so see what happens, it'll make it probably even better, of course. Oh, my gosh. It'll make it even better. Definitely it will be the best. So no one will have to buy a special computer to run some special software. No one will have to pay $15,000 for an editing, you know, video editing software. I mean, I'm not talking about, like, you know, iMovie or Windows Movie Maker. I'm talking about, re- this is high-end Hollywood films that are made with this thing. Mm-hmm. Well, anyway, they're open sourcing it, and they're... Um, what do they call it? Uh, they're basically reprogramming it so that it'll run on Linux, nice. and they're hopefully they, they're saying by autumn it will be available. So anybody running any PC that has any kind of an Intel or AMD processor in it can put Linux on that machine free and put this video editing software on it free. And so this is huge for independent filmmakers, for all filmmakers, for the whole entire planet. You know, and between video that, podcasters. Yeah, between <laughs> that nice. and uh, like us. Yeah, exactly. Between that and also YouTube s- settling on this free open source standard. You see, yeah. like even even with Linux and all the free open source software, you can't you can't just encode an MP3 file because why? Oh, MP3 is patent encumbered. You have mm-hmm. to get this special software or pay somebody the the licensing fee. Yeah. But now, if everything is an open standard and it's free open source, no patents, no licensing issues it just makes everything better well i can understand some of the motive i guess is to make um some more competition for something that's more people can get their hands on that's free but can they like ever take that back like can they once they free open source it and then all these people collaborate and make it this unique product and everyone switches over to it can they like later say, well, since we owned it originally, we're going to take this part of it or all of no, that? And that's a very good question, but the answer is no. When they release it with a license like that, it says that this is free for everyone forever. It's forever. And, in fact, it, it's very specific that any changes that are made to it must be released as free forever also. Mm-hmm. So no one can make it closed. They can't open it and then two years later close, close it, it again. No, right. they can't. Okay, that's they, good. In fact, they can't even take it and add more closed stuff to it and then sell that as closed. You can't do that. And you can't and I can't. No one can do it. So that's part of the license that I can't take something that's free open source and then improve it and then close it and call it mine. Mm-hmm. You can't do that. It's a violation of the license. It's like a, well, it's a violation of the copyright. So this looks like some kind of trend within the free open source movement, but what's the real motive? I oh, mean, yeah, that's a standardizing. <laughs> or something? Very good question. Why would a company for profit? This is a for profit company. It's well, it's obvious that they have deep pockets and they can afford to do these things. No, but not why? necessarily. No, not necessarily at all. They. Google has deep pockets, but this other company may yeah, but not. they can have a lot of invest. I can tell you investors why investors and you know the reason. Why would they do this? This is not a charity. It's not a church or something. This is a. The, why would a for-profit company take a product that they own and give it away to the world? I'll tell you why. They make more money, and here's how. First of all, if you own a product, and also by the way, this video editor, they're comparing it to like the Sony Betamax versus VHS. Betamax was superior technology. Technologically, right. it was better, but because of marketing and funding and financing whatever VHS won and everybody used VHS but beta was better right well anyway that's obviously history but they're comparing mm-hmm. this video editor to that that this is the better video editor but it just didn't catch on and it didn't sell right. well if you are the company you're the for-profit company that owns this product and it's not selling you're not making any money mm-hmm. but you got something here you got something that's better mm-hmm you think it through. See, they're very, very smart. They're very. They have a lot of foresight. They open source it. They give it to the whole world. And what's going to happen? They're going to get two billion users. And what's going to happen then? Well, they're setting up an app store for add-on plugins that can be used that are compatible with it. Mm-hmm. And they're going to make a lot more money selling add-on plugins that go into that software. So they see than they would the- otherwise. But the model of like iTunes and their well, not their iTunes, iPhones or whatever, no. like apps and stuff. Yes they and can no. Charge. No, 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 no. Not I, I, yes, but not. I would not use that as an example because Apple and iTunes is completely closed. Well, of course, it's absolutely controlled by one company that makes 
huge amount of profit on every single thing that's sold. No. Yeah, but they can see the profit. They can see the profit of add-ons, that's selling their add-ons. motivation, right? Yeah, they can see the profit of adding, add, selling add-ons, but it's not closed. For example, you can start a plug-in store for that video editor, and I can start a plug-in store for that video editor. Anybody can. With Apple and iTunes, Apple owns the, the hardware. They own, even though you bought it, they own your hardware, really, because they control it. You cannot run anything on there that, that, that Steve Jobs if Steve Jobs says no, you can't run that program on there. You, you have music, Steve Jobs doesn't like it, no. Application, Steve Jobs doesn't like it, nope. Anything, content, he doesn't approve of, you cannot watch it on your iPhone because Steve Jobs says no. It's completely proprietary, and you can't just... Um, buy a piece of software and, and run it on your iPhone because Steve Jobs says no. It's completely controlled by Apple, so that's a very mm-hmm. bad example. It's more like buying a book on the internet. You can buy it from any website. You know, it's like that. It's completely open. So now they, so they're going to make money selling plugins for this video editor. Mm-hmm. However, they're not going to be the only one. I'm sure there'll be dozens of other companies selling plugins for this video editor. But they are the most famous one. They're the one who developed it and owned it and made it open source. So because of the most famous, they're going to make probably make more than the other guys. Um, the bottom line is that even if they only make a little bit more than they were before, they're still making more than they were before. Well, it's branding, obviously. Because the, uh, the video it's editor, well. maybe the video editor wasn't selling. It wasn't selling enough copies. So even if you sold it for $20,000, if you're only selling 10 a year, it's, mm-hmm. you're going to make more selling plugins to 2 billion users. People that, yeah, right. You see? That, that makes sense. So they make yeah. more money in the end. That's great. So Well, that's a good, uh, that's a great news for the free open source software movement, for video editors. Actually, humanity, <laughs> for all humanity, because everyone will benefit. You, people who have no idea what the heck I just talked about, they will all benefit. <laughs> if you watch YouTube ever, you will benefit. Mm-hmm. If you have a phone that you can watch videos on, you'll benefit. The whole entire planet, you know, poor people in third world countries who are living on $20 a month income will be producing their this. own videos. Yeah, they'll be using this, the, the world's best video editing software. Can you imagine? That's great. It's well, I think it's great. For documentary source, films coming good. out of, you know, places that can just, they can't even afford a computer. So, anyway, <laughs> it's amazing. So, it's been a great week for that. And uh, I only got to one blog item. We have so much to talk about. But, yeah, well, we'll get through it, course through it. Um, uh, I have a few other things, and we have a few minutes left, so I'll briefly go through some of these uh, the headlines and uh, on for those of you that are into fitness and uh, working out, um, which you probably already figured out, which I sort of figured out on my own uh, probably more recently uh, about interval training and uh, there's a new study saying that high intensity interval training is twice as effective as regular exercise. Um, and basically, for those of you who don't know what interval training is, is uh, like grabbing a like a, a heavy weight and just pumping it as far as you can until exhaustion and you do that for about five or ten minutes at a time and you can do it about four times a day so you're doing about 20 30 minutes of exercise and you can do it just every other day and your muscles will increase a lot faster than doing two and three hour workouts and and for those of you that are already into fitness, you probably, like I said, figured this out because I, I started that. What's the difference again? I, I don't understand. Like, well, interval training is just like high intensity, uh, short intervals of like with working no break. out. So you're just like working out with no rest in between? Yeah, there's some like a three minute maybe period that you rest and then you can do it again. Or you can do it three hours later and just do another five or ten minutes of a high intensity something. Yeah, but isn't that the way you normally work out anyway? You take a three minute break in between each set of exercises. What's the difference? I don't get it. That you're not doing it for an hour long. You can do it for 20 or 30 minutes and get this twice as the benefit. That's the whole study. That's what it says. And uh, and we started working out last year doing a little bit of that, um, like using your own body weight and uh, things like that with the P90X and now we're starting the uh, the new one. With, What's it called? Uh, incredible or um, 
Insanity. I'm Insanity. Sorry, <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Uh, and that's their video DVD series. The, there's one called it's yeah, Beachbody Workout at home. or something. It was the original one was called Beachbody Workout. Then they have P90X, and now they have Insanity. Insanity. They're really, right. really good. It's really fun to put it on the TV and just do it. You know, you don't need to be at the gym. Yeah, it's not something that you need to be at a gym. You like we have here. Like I, I bought a chin up bar and put it over the door, and buy you know uh, just dumbbells and pick those up or a kettlebell. And so I think it's it's uh, it's probably the trend of the future is people are not going to work out for long periods of time, you know, because you get the same benefits and why should you? And and so it's kind of like what they call mus- muscle confusion. So you just lift and lift and lift and lift until you're just strained by it, and your body reacts a lot quicker to that than doing something over a prolonged period of time and doing it every day. Your body doesn't really, it's not like trauma to your body if you're doing it every day, as opposed to like picking something up and just to exhaustion. Your body reacts to it and then creates the muscle that you need. So it's uh, some it's pretty important stuff for those of you that are maybe getting into that and don't know which way to go. Um, and I thought it was important enough to bring it up. Cool. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. We definitely need to do that. Our <laughs> summer is here. Yeah. So um, our time is about up. We, do, we can't. We don't want to go over our time limit, so we fit on YouTube. But um, I wanted to uh, bring this up that we're going to be able to take call-ins on Skype. We've got Skype, so you're gonna your face could be right here, and we can actually mm-hmm. chat with you live on Skype, which will be really right fun. Right between us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right there on the big screen, and your head will be bigger than ours on the video. But uh, anyway. Uh, we wanted to. Um, we'll, we'll be talking more about that tomorrow, but we're going to be able to take uh, your obviously your email feedback, um, feedback through Twitter, through um, you name it. Chat, UStream. Yeah, the chat on UStream. There's a chat room on UStream. We're going to set up an IRC channel too. That's another thing, which, which is a chat room on the website. And, and uh, uh, also answer emails for any questions, like of the topics that we covered, for example, today. Uh, or corrections, of course, if we said something that wasn't correct, mm-hmm. we'll be so answering you know your emails, viewer email. So we're anyway we're getting set up so that we, we can do uh, email and uh, Twitter at replies and SMS, even telephone voicemail and live telephone calls and Skype. So uh, if you're interested in participating in any of those things, just let us know. Um, follow the links. You can go to breadtv.com. It's B-R-E-D-T-V.com, and everything is there, and we'll keep you informed. So we're, we're doing this uh, live Monday through Friday, every day, 10 a.m. in New York, 10 a.m. New York time, Monday through Friday every day. So if you want to yeah. join us live, just uh, go to B-R-E-D-T-V.com, breadtv.com, and click on the live button. And, and then when you, once you get into the Ustream page, make sure you click, click on the chat room thing, and uh, you can join us live in the chat room. Room and uh, then call us on Skype or contact mm-hmm. us anytime. If you just give us your Skype name and we'll call you, whatever. <laughs> we'll uh, look forward to seeing you. Yeah. All right. So I guess uh, until the next the time. And uh, we have our music uh, together, right, for the intro and the outro. Yeah, yeah. Now we have <laughs> we have our new theme music by Rick Knight. He's a great composer and he's given us the uh the music so anyway we'll see you tomorrow ciao great great (laughs) to see you and hope to hear from you soon take care bye